everybody. Um, I'm going to show you some work uh, I did alongside José Alberto Gomes and uh, Rui Peña. Um, and that work was done in the light of Braga Yards and the University of Porto. Um, yeah, so let's get on to it. Uh, if you want to check it out, uh, we have uh, a website online. You know, this research is mainly focused on uh, the artistic practice. Um, and if you want to check, there's also a festival uh, in Braga called Smibrev. Um, some experimental music, some contemporary art, if you might be interested in. And uh, yeah, the basic, uh, the basic interests of this research was in computer music, contemporary media art, and collaborative interfaces. And web technology is pretty much what wraps everything uh, with it. And this talk will be mainly and thinking about collaborative interfaces. How does that work? So. Uh, I'm in the panel of human-computer interaction, <laughs> and even the paper gets uh, gets that pretty deep. And how we do that? Um, so, mainly uh, the framework we use, uh, most of you must be familiar with. It's Node.js. Um, we use for graphics uh, 3.js and audio, uh, also Tone.js. I've seen also uh, earlier some people using it, and. Most importantly, the library, the library socket I.O. to establish uh, connections between people uh, from the server side to the instances, and Nexus, which is a great uh, framework. I use a lot of code from there um, and hack a little bit to make the interface. Um, yeah, and we establish everything in the Heroku platform. So, uh, of course, if you want to port this to Amazon or just use your own server, must be great and also something to explore uh, further. Um, it's interesting because I don't see the next slide here. <laughs> so this is the environment we did. Uh, this is Axon, uh, another visual environment for network, network interaction and performance. So, of course, this runs in the web. This was made uh, to run in the web using the technologies I just described. And uh, if you allow me, I'll just show you a little bit of this. Um, so you can get how this is happening. So you, you, you load it, you have this 3D environment uh, that you can navigate with the lights you can see very well. But, so you can click here and get feedback. So you click the interface, uh, everybody, uh, everybody can do this at the same time because it's, 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 uh, it works like that, but I'll come to that in the later. Uh, and then you have various scenes. These ones if you if you can get to, if you can get well you don't see very well. But you just you just float into the scene and you have changes in the in the in the musical properties. Um, yeah and it also accepts MIDI uh, which is in, is is not in the paper because this is pretty much the paper is actually based on uh, the, the, low, the lower level our work has. And uh, yeah, you have also some panels. Um, um, right, this is the master, you, you don't need it. This is just a console to print sliders and faders and so on, sliders and knobs and so on. And most importantly uh, to this talk is we split this in four, uh, also based in the, in the string quartet from, from Todd Winkler, and I'll go to that in a second. So you have this main synthesizer that you click. You have this background, so you can change the synthesizer. Uh, see. It's the harmonics, so, yeah. And then you have the background, so you can also change it. And you also have graphics. Oh, this is the first scene. Yeah, so you get it. It's, and it, you also have the post-production tab, which is some overall uh, methods for the environment where, you can, where you, can, you can change, such as shaders and so on. Um, 
Yeah, and it's pretty much this. It's, it's split in four. It's, it's thought about being an environment with four instruments. Uh, you can look at it as one single instrument. I'm glad you look at it that way, but it's, it's thought to be, to be used this way. Um, and so how do people use it uh, collaboratively is the next part I'm going to talk about. So we implemented from scratch the interaction models from Todd Winkler. So this book, Composing Interactive Music, is actually uh, pretty, pretty straightforward and in a prag very pragmatic, pragmatic way. But this is it. This is the conductor model, paradigm of the symphony orchestra. This is the chamber music model, string, string quartet, and the improvisation model uh, based on the jazz combo. And as you can see, I put there for, for instances, so say you get the synthesizer, another friend of yours get the background, and then displaced in the world, you can interact um, this way. So the way we do this is we approach this in a completely centralized way. Um, so everything passes through the server, which was interesting in the experiments I'm gonna show later uh, to record everything that was happening and then to map with what people told us uh, about the experiments. So we have emission, we have a connection matrix, it goes through the server and then it goes to another phone. So first through the connection matrix, so because the other guy might, not, might want to be in the other model, um, so you feel free. And what we do is we gather sound data, like properties of the filters, uh, we get graphics data, like color intensity, um, we get user information, like where you are, in which model, um, and, since there, and system information, like in which machine it's running, if you support WebGL, whatever. And it goes through the connection matrix, and this is where we define the model. So we chose, this is the synthesizer, so this is one. This is the background, this is another, so this is the way we did it. Um, this is an example of it, so an instance, the synthesizer streaming through everybody. So say you have uh, 30 cell phones and you just want to use your computer and stream the synthesizer to all of them, it's a possibility. And then there's also the, po we, we did uh, actually cut all the connections to, to make, to, for you to be able to be alone and play alone um, and nobody messing with what you're doing. And I ask here, because you have the free improvisation model also, which is interesting because, you know, as musicians, we can ask, yeah, I, what is improvisation? I can be also improvising in the other models, so, which is a nice question for that. But we just, we just added this to free them, to add freedom for the user, yeah. And um, when it comes to scale this up, uh, well, our experiments didn't go far from dozens of people, but when you, had, when you have thousands and, and millions of people, you know, a lot uh, of interfaces, whatever, uh, with or without agency, this gets pretty bad. And we also go, in the end of the article on scalability, we talk about possibilities to group people, to group uh, in the back end things and then allocate them and then uh, people through menu or something might be able to, oh, I want to go to that one, I want to go to the other one, so um, this also might be interesting to think in a really, really large scale um, platform. So we use design-based research methodology, so the iterative process, so we did one model, we went to the field, and then we did the other model, and then we went to the field, and so on. The first model was presented at Centro.Clim Interartistic, the second one in Generation Gallery, which is also part of Braga Media Arts, and the third one in Open Field Creative Lab. These were the three main uh, research experiments. And then we also presented it in Milan, in Fabrica del Vapore, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, <laughs> in, in Excoax, uh, which is the picture you have there, and currently is in NTNU in uh, installation, which is a little bit different, you don't have panels and so on, we just use the engine to make a global sound sculpture where you can connect on and, and play with. It's, it's more an artwork approach. Yeah, and so possible future work. Um, we, we say at least these five things that might be interesting in future use. So to dynamically allocate some method of the, of the graphical interface to the socket structure um, and then 
people who are using being able to change it dynamically uh, might be interesting. It adds more complexity, but it also might, allow, might, might give you more freedom to, to actually make your own model um, or the way your model is structured. And then the study of data streaming latency on adaptive systems is always a, a valuable type of research um, for, for improvements. And then also another one interesting is to transpose this system to a completely decentralized infrastructure uh, architecture, I'm sorry, like blockchain and so on. You also have really nice um, frameworks. Um, yeah, as I said in the previous slide, automation and adaptive rules are good for large scale. And this is, the last one is a little bit more uh, kind of an artistic opinion of ours, that is uh, stochastic modeling through, say, variable Markov models or so on, to orchestrate um, machines without uh, deterministic induction. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. Thank you for this. You feel free to contact me, and I'll, I'll, I'll love to have a coffee with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, are there any questions? Uh, thank you very much. Um, it, it, so it interests me that you um, cited Todd Winkler's yeah. um, models um, of interaction. Um, and certainly they're very useful, but um, it seems to me that when you're obviously leading towards large scale mm -hmm. interaction, you know, within Todd's model, there's a very, <coughs> excuse me, a variation in essentially where the leadership is and how yeah. that gets shared or, or moved to a single individual in terms yeah. of the conductor. And it seems to me that when you start to work with even, let's say, 100 devices, yeah. then you're really starting to deal with a completely different scenario where that leadership is decentralised and perhaps even rhizomic. And so it seems to me that those models no longer apply there and mm -hmm. so I'm wondering, as you're working on that and thinking about yeah. that, if you have some thing to add to that about how you think about interaction in that decentralized, yeah. perhaps rhizomic model. Yeah. So uh, first of all, thank you for that question. So we've been paying a lot of attention to that, actually. So uh, that's, that's an interesting question. And I think more for the artists than for the engineering, than for the engineering part of the system. Because I have reports, you know, from, from the experiments I have from, you know, professional musicians saying, well, I don't want that person messing with what I'm doing. So uh, this is where subjectivity comes in. And the part of the first thing we do when we talk about, we say when we talk about uh, scalability in this, in this architecture is let's separate and give people the ability to separate from the other one, from the, the, the other musicians or artists, whatever. And, but you, you're, you're thinking in a way when there's a thousand people. Um, yeah, and we can also make another kind of, conne uh, another kind of counting uh, and, and ask people if they want to, to yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's super subjective, um, and, and it's interesting to, to, to see, well, even, even in, in jazz combo, uh, even in string quartet, you know, sometimes people are not doing what they're supposed to do <laughs> and just fly in, in their own way of, expre of expressing. But, yeah, that's an interesting question. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, since uh, you mentioned you wanted to make things more complex and less deterministic possibly in the future, I was wondering if you considered or Im implemented any way to um, analyze multiple players' uh, activities and um, have sort of the program react to it or add some musical contribution in terms of what they're doing similar or what they're doing differently and so on. So that would have some kind of an emergent musical effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That would be amazing to have and to kind of make this adaptive kind of evolutionary system. And 
Um, no, I, I ha we haven't done that. The only, the only kind of global, uh, you know, counting, the only global data that we got from the experiments is um, like clicks and so we can use that data and correlate with the, with the video and with the recordings that we did in the experiments. Uh, and then we also took, we, we made like a list with the hardware used in each session so you can correlate this and see, okay, this one's this way, this one's that way. Um, but yeah, to give that kind of uh, adaptability, this, that kind of, uh, to the system would be in, super interesting, yeah. But we also get to the problem posed by the colleague that what if not everybody wants that? Um, which is interesting, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any more questions? Okay, then let's thank the speaker. Thank again. you. Mm -hmm.